even though the first shipments of the Steam Deck got delayed till February 2022, it's still inching closer and closer by the day. And because of that, we're finding out more and more about the system, about the hardware, about the software, about how it's all going to come together. And one of those components is SteamOS 3. And recently, there was a story about how SteamOS is using a read-only immutable root file system, and I've seen some mixed opinions about this, along with some misunderstandings about what this actually means. Now, when we say immutable root file system, this can have different meanings in different contexts, but generally what it's going to mean is the system software, so things like your kernel, your bootloader, your init system, the programs you actually have installed on your system, Steam, whatever else comes with it, the system configuration files, the sudo config, all of the other configs you have, all of that stuff cannot be modified by the user. So this means, at least by default, I'll explain this in just a bit, you won't be able to use things like Pac-Man to actually install new software and do system updates. You won't be able to do a Pac-Man-SYU and then get the latest version of Arch. The way the updates are being distributed is as an entire new image, which is going to replace the old image and then you'll be on the updated version. This might sound really weird, but this method is used for updating mobile devices, things like Android and iOS devices, updating consoles like the PS4, PS5, presumably the Xbox does the same, but I cannot confirm that. Also, it is used for a Linux distro, that being Fedora Silverblue. It's for a very different use case, but if you want to check out something today that works the same way the software model is going to work as SteamOS, Fedora Silverblue is probably one of the best things you could go with. Now, that might sound completely horrible if you're a Linux enthusiast used to the way that Linux typically works, especially coming from an Arch-based distro where, you know, you can do basically whatever you want. But there is a caveat. So, there is a developer mode which can be enabled by any user, which obviously lets you do developer things, but also can be used to turn SteamOS 3 into a regular Arch-based distro. It's still going to be updated through those images, but you'll have access to using Pac-Man and doing all of the stuff that you could normally do on Arch, deleting Grub, deleting System D, or, you know, something actually productive. Typically, that's something that most users won't need to do, and when it comes to installing games on Steam, not an issue at all because Steam doesn't install games into your root directory. It installs them in a massively complex folder inside of your home directory, and for things outside of Steam, the SteamOS and Steam Deck developers have specifically mentioned using flat packs. Now, while they have mentioned flat packs directly, I would be very surprised if app images don't work as well. On the note of flat packs, this hasn't been discussed, but I really hope that it actually comes with some sort of graphical flat pack store, whether that's built into the Steam Deck interface or it's some extra application running on the Steam Deck. While the CLI utility is by no means bad, it's kind of weird for a console like device to then require you to do something from the terminal. It just makes sense for it to be graphical. Now, this is going to be a lot more hit and miss, but I don't see any reason why, even not in developer mode, that you wouldn't be able to go and just download a binary and then run it from, say, your home directory. Obviously, this is going to be a lot more hit and miss when you're not using developer mode because you're going to have to be assuming that the dependencies are actually installed with the image, which may be the case for simple applications, but for more complex stuff, you know, you can't guarantee, and I think that's why they're suggesting you use a containerized solution like a flat pack. If I'm being completely honest, I feel like this is a really, really good idea, and addresses one of the major issues that a lot of people had with this being an Arch-based distro. Arch is an absolutely amazing distro. I feel like most people watching this channel, even if they don't use Arch, at least have some level of appreciation for what distros like Arch allow you to do. But... You cannot deny that sometimes Arch does break. Sometimes you have out-of-date keys requiring you to update your key list because you can't actually go and install any other packages. Sometimes you'll have bad mirrors. Sometimes you'll have package conflicts. Sometimes there'll be various other forms of manual intervention that you only know how to fix because you go and read the, you know, the Arch news. 
And while that's perfectly fine from someone going into this as an Arch-based system, the Steam Deck is designed to be a console-like device, and these sort of problems are not acceptable on a console. Rather than working around the problem using custom repos and all of that fun stuff, this basically just eliminates the package manager problem altogether and turns Arch into a true fixed point release. Not a fixed point like Ubuntu where, you know, you can install other things through apt. This is, you download it, it's fixed. The only stuff you can do is inside of the user data directories. This is something that had to be done, especially to make sure that this does not suffer the exact same death as the old Steam machines. Because even if Valve decides, hey, we no longer care about the Steam Deck, we're no longer going to be updating SteamOS 3. Unlike SteamOS 2, uh, you know, you could keep using it. If you don't know, SteamOS 2 is based on Debian 8 has never been updated past Debian 8. So while you can functionally use that, I really wouldn't want to be. For the record, that's Debian 8 stable, not Debian 8 LTS. And Debian 8 LTS has already hit its end of life. So please do not install SteamOS 2 unless you like ancient software and probably malware. Now, I can't speak on how this is actually going to be implemented, but overall, it sounds like a good idea. But even so, I have a couple of concerns that hopefully do get addressed. So, Valve has specifically mentioned accommodating games outside of Steam, making it easier to add and manage them on the Steam Deck, having some sort of, you know, extra tab that is just outside of Steam games, getting them easily running through Proton, for example. Now, this raises the question of how do you install them? Because unless this ships with Lutris, which, you know, is entirely possible, Getting Lutris installed without activating dev mode requires you to use the beta flat pack. Now, I have done this on my system, and it is an absolute pain to do because working through the uh, the flat hub beta channels requires you to install beta packages and beta dependencies and setting up the beta repo altogether, and it's not a good experience. Also, seeing as though the team working on the Lutris flat pack is a very small team, it's also a bit out of date. So the flat pack is on 0.5.8.4, and the regular version I installed through the Arch repos is on 0.5.9.1. That's not a massive difference, but it is still a couple of months out of date. And for things like the Heroic Launcher, there is an app image available, but at least for Lutris, it's going to be a fairly fiddly solution. I don't know if there's really any better way to handle this than getting Lutris actually properly in Flathub or just shipping with Lutris. My other concern is Proton G, otherwise known as Proton Glorious Egg Roll. Now, while the main version of Proton is going to work for quite a lot of games. There are some games that either require this custom version of Proton or just run better with this version. I typically just run Proton G as a default because even if it doesn't make anything better, I haven't seen any games where running it makes the game worse. Now, actually... Getting new version of the Proton GE does not require modifying your root directory. All you do is you download the new version and then put it in the correct location in your Steam directory. But the initial setup may require some custom packages. So what you need to do is make sure you have Wine installed. You'll have Wine installed for just regular Proton. You'll make sure you need to have the Vulkan drivers installed. You're also going to have that because, you know, you're running AMD and there is a 0% chance it does not ship with the AMD Vulkan drivers because that would be really, really, really dumb. Um, you also need to have wine tricks installed. Here's where we start getting into problems. You don't need wine tricks for the regular version of Proton and you also need to make sure you go and explicitly install all of the wine dependencies, which also is not required for the main version of Proton. So... I hope that Valve takes these into consideration and understands that a lot of games will run better with Proton GE, and even though they won't be able to ship with it, 
at least let the user get it working without going into dev mode. Obviously, you can get this working in dev mode, but that's a bit of a hassle and it shouldn't need to be done. Even though I don't have a Steam Deck pre-ordered, I'm still very excited to see what Valve actually gets done with the Steam Deck and with SteamOS 3. I've heard some mumbling that Valve is looking to open up pre-orders in places like Australia and Japan, along with other places in the world, but nothing has been confirmed at this point, and I have no idea when that might happen. But when the SteamOS 3 ISO is made available, I will be testing it. Um, they have confirmed that it will be completely available to the public. You won't need a Steam Deck to actually get that. But Valve, there is thousands hundreds of thousands of Linux users who want to beta test your operating system. Give us a beta test program, Valve. Abuse the free labor, Valve. It'll be good for you, Valve. If that does happen, I'll be keeping my eye out for it, but I'm honestly not holding my breath. So let me know what you think about this immutable root file system. Do you think this is a good thing, or do you think it should just be, you know, Completely free real estate, do whatever you want with it, no restrictions out of the box. I don't know, maybe you guys are going to disagree with me, but I still think this is a really good solution. So that's going to be it for me, and if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon, subscribe to only Berapay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Bro Robson Plays, where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or six YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and...